Hi, everyone. Welcome to Unveiling Islam. I'm David Wood here with Brother Rashid. And Brother Rashid, there are lots of specifics that we can get into um, when we're examining the Quran. There are all sorts of uh, different issues that arise, things that the Quran says on different topics. Hmm. But uh, lots of Christians don't even know what the Quran is. They think it's, you know, the, the, the Muslim version of the Bible. And that's true in a sense as far as being their, their core text. But there are some serious differences. So uh, why don't you start us off like at the very beginning of, uh, you know, the most, the, the most basic issues. Like what, what does, what is the Quran, word Quran even mean? Quran is from the Arabic word Quran. So Quran is not even an Arabic word. So even if Muslims say it's Arabic, it's not. It's Syriac. It comes from Syriac language. Quite a bit of Syriac going around. Yeah. In there, it's, some sources. it's Qaryono, yeah. actually. Or Qaryana, it depends if uh, the West or the East. So, so Qaryono, Qaryana. Qaryono or Qaryana means a scripture, a liturgy. So when, uh, in the early days, they go to church and they read certain readings, a reading is called Qur'ano Qur'an. So Muhammad or whoever compiled the Qur'an used that word, a liturgy, to name this book. We read also in history when they gathered the book, they didn't find a name for it. Actually, some sources say they tried to, to name it a gospel. And so they, they say Mus'haf, now we say Mus'haf. Mm -hmm. Mus'haf is a book. Sahifa is um, uh, anything written, we can call it Sahifa. This is Sahifa, for example. So Mus'haf is a book, the gathering of um, uh, pages. So it's a book, Mus'haf is a book. Quran is this book. It's uh, written in Arabic, classical Arabic, very old. It's like reading Shakespeare now or even worse. Um, so we don't understand most of it. If you go to mosques or like go to the street and ask Muslims in Morocco or Tunisia or Egypt, you ask them some basic words in the Quran, they would not know the meaning. And, and people don't even, even scholars don't know the meaning. I was just reading uh, a chapter of the Quran and reading the commentary, and it actually said there are 16 interpretations of what this word means. So I was like, what, what, what? <laughs> what there, there is not a single verse in the Quran. I never read in the commentaries, there are differences about this verse. I never, until now, I never found one that there is a total agreement about the meaning of that verse. And that is, I, I think that is an issue, because one of the things the Quran repeatedly claims is, it, it talks about how clear it is. Like, oh, uh, like, like a lot of mubin. Yeah, it's a, like a, lot a clear Arabic the book. <laughs> yeah, so like the, the impression you get from reading these claims about how clear it is, is like Allah had all eternity to get this book exactly the way he wanted it, and he made it like the, the perfect, most clear language he could, and then you read it, and it's, uh, you know, you can, you can read a dozen different, completely different interpretations of a verse. Yes, and it's 114 chapters, and it starts with the longest to the shortest, kind of. Very strange way to arrange your... Exactly, no chronology, and sometimes it jumps from one topic to another. It's talking about Moses now, Suddenly Noah, suddenly Jesus, suddenly about the polytheists at uh, Muhammad's time, suddenly about how heaven proves the existence of God and you see no, lo no link between topics. It's not like the Bible, you read Genesis and then you expect what's coming next and you follow the process. In the Quran, there is no chronology, there is no logic. Uh, and that's because of the way how it was written. Muhammad had scribes around him. So each time he gets this chance and he starts like, uh, he, uh, I think for me, it's an epilepsy. We can talk about it. It certainly sounds time. like that. And then after a while, he wakes up and he says, hey, write this verse. It came to me. And they start writing. Then they collected them later. So 
of course, they, they didn't put them in chronology, so they just, like, kind of gathered them together and just compiled them. And they started naming the chapters. Oh, put that in the chapter that talks about the cow. So now we have a chapter of the cow. Oh, put that in the chapter that talks about Mary. And then we have the chapter of Mary. And then, oh, yeah, put that in the chapter of Ali Imran or Al Maida, the table. So they put it in the table. And that's why. Uh, the, the, it's like a, a chaos. Mm -hmm. It's it just a bunch of verses gathered together put in this book. And when you read it, you get really confused. Yeah, that's, uh, that is an ongoing uh, issue with the arrangement. What's, what's interesting is you can, we can understand why this difficulty arose because if Muhammad is just, you know, on various uh, occasions when people are asking him questions, then he, he claims to have received a revelation. They don't have it in a book. They don't have, it's, he's, he's not making this book as he goes along and then they're just adding, you know, new chapters uh, to it. He's, 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 he's giving verses and passages to his followers, telling them to memorize it, and then some of them are memorizing it and so on. So it's all circulating. And then Muhammad dies, and it's, and it's like, oh, we've got all this stuff. Yeah. We've got all this stuff that Muhammad's been quoting for all these uh, years to us, and we need to put it together. And it's just so weird to say, well, hey, let's just, you know, we got the little prayer at the beginning, but other than that, we'll go longest to shortest, even though it's completely out of, out of order. That one of the problems is the Quran doesn't give you even the background of certain verses. So we have to dig somewhere else to understand why he said this, for whom, and what's the topic here exactly. For example, yes, alunaka an dil qarnain. They ask you about dil qarnain. Well, who? Yeah. Who asked? Why? So you, you don't understand. You have to go to commentaries. They say some Jews, some polytheists, uh, like different interpretations. And that started from the beginning of the Quran. You, you of course, you studied um, the first revelation, how it came to Muhammad. He told us he was in a cave and suddenly the angel came to him and said, read, read. And then the first chapter in the Quran started, which is 96. And, but who knows exactly? Because even that story, when we dig, at the beginning, it was they said it was a dream, and then they changed it through history. Now it's a fact. It's not just a dream. It happened literally. They believe it happened as is. We don't know exactly, and that's why the Quran is just a collection. So that 96 is not even, it should, it should be the first one. Yeah, if you, if you were arranging it in order of revelation. <laughs> like, you could, there, there, there are multiple... There are multiple ways of arranging the material that makes sense. One would be in order that Muhammad is receiving the revelation, or you could go chrono chronologically, like if it's talking about Abraham, put that here. Or Adam Moses, first. Yeah. Yeah. And, and putting all these, putting all these in, in order. Uh, but no, they went, they, went, uh, they went longest to shortest. And, and that's why if, if you want to study the story of Moses, you will not find it in one chapter. You have to just collect verses from here and there, and then you have the story of Moses. And if, some of them are repeated literally the same. And if you want to study the, the life of Jesus, you need to gather from here and there and here and there, and then you collect. It's not like the Gospels. It starts with the birth and then ends with the crucifixion and the resurrection. No, it's not like that. You just go, it's scattered all over the Quran. Yeah, and so it's, a, it's quite a bit of work. And so some of the issues that, that you've already brought up, it, you know, one, the Quran is saying things, if you do not know what this is responding to or what question this is responding to or the, the background, you don't even know the people who are named. If you don't know the historical background, oh. you can't understand this. And then the way it's arranged is confusing, especially as something we'll be talking about uh, eventually, the, the idea of abrogation that uh, earlier revelations can be canceled by later ones. But if it's not in order, you need all of these outside sources and commentaries to understand a book that constantly brags about how clear and fully explained that, that it already is. The Quran is not sufficient for a Muslim. The Quran always has to have something with it. 
It's not like the Bible. You can't read the Bible and it's sufficient for a Christian. For the Quran, you will not understand even some verses, what they are saying, the meaning, unless you have the background and have other commentaries that will help you. For example, when it talks about Zaid, Zaid divorcing his wife. Who's Zaid? Mm -hmm. What's yeah, the relationship know. with Muhammad? And we don't know. So you, ha you, you need to dig somewhere else. Uh, or like when it mentions um, Lukman, uh, uh, we don't know yeah, who's, who's, who's Lukman. Yeah. Who's this guy? Yeah. Who's the Qarnain? Who's this? So you, you need to dig. And, and the problem when you go to commentaries, they don't have one opinion, sir. Many times, as I said, so they, they have different versions. So you're just, uh, it's a very difficult task, actually. Yeah, and lots of times the, the sources that you would need to even understand these passages are, are much later, and so yeah, how, how can I trust them? Um, one more important difference just for, for Christians who are, who are watching, because you, you've mentioned the Bible. The Bible is a collection of, um, of writings of various witnesses, and here it talks about... Adam and Abraham and Moses and Jesus and so on, but it's all just from Revelation specifically to, supposedly to one guy, Muhammad. Yeah, uh, Muhammad supposedly got revelation through the angel Gabriel from God, Allah himself. It's his word, letter for letter, word for word. He had no hand in it. He was just a, a receiving vessel, mm -hmm. like he receives it, and then he says it, and it's written in Arabic. You can't pray in other language. They say it can't be even translated. They say the translation of the meanings mm -hmm. of the Quran. God will not accept your prayer unless you do it in Arabic because the, it's the holy language. And uh, if you want to get really um, the, the right meaning, you have to study it in Arabic. That's what they say. Because even translation, it picks one, one side or one background or one commentary, mm -hmm. and it follows it. Yeah. And so uh, at the end of the day, this all comes down to one witness. It's, it's, it's all from Muhammad, so everything's riding on one guy as opposed to the Bible, where we've got an entire cloud of witnesses uh, explaining these things to us. And so... Seems like we need to look at these things a bit more closely, and we'll be doing that uh, in future installments here.